When you use the dark web, you're running through a relay of servers which anonymizes your IP address. No, nobody can see what you're looking at. Nobody can see the sites which you're accessing. Liam Lybird said buying a Glock pistol was as easy as buying a bar of chocolate. Does that surprise you? Uh, well, if you're computer savvy, well, no, is the short answer. But if you're computer savvy, or, or even if you're just, you know, um, uh, relatively able with computers, then it's, it's, it's easy. Um, for somebody with a good knowledge of computers, which I'm led to believe he has, then it really would be as simple as buying a, buying a, a, a piece of chocolate, a, a, a bar of chocolate, yes. One of the academics at the same university briefed the police on cyber security and was then asked to get involved in the Lulsec case. Yeah, this is a more visual interpretation of the data which allows us to know where the attacks are coming from. This is basically the, the hackers have um, managed to breach the system um, using a buffer overflow attack. They're just showing off. Dr. David Day was unpicking evidence on the computer hard drive of T-Flow, one of the most technically competent of the LulzSec hackers. How good a hacker was he? So he was very good. Um, he, he was using the, uh, the, the, tool, the appropriate tools for performing uh, this kind of activity. He was well versed in their use um, and he knew how to, to, to write code and, and write malicious scripts to a level you know, which far exceeds what I would have imagined somebody of his age to be able to do. Were you surprised when you did eventually find out just how young he was? I was very surprised, yes. Um, I, I wouldn't have imagined somebody that age would have had the time to accumulate that level of knowledge and expertise. Did you yourself find you were becoming immersed in this world? Totally absorbed, yeah, yeah, for probably about two weeks. Um, I, I didn't do an awful lot else. I, had a, uh, I spent a lot of my time hauled up. I was working long hours um, on occasions where I found something that I found exciting. I got animated and maybe stayed up you know, to the early hours of the morning or sometimes in the night I'd wake up with an idea and, and have no option other than to get up and, 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 and test my hypothesis. But, I mean, I totally understand um, that, you know, how, how, how hacking um, can be thrilling uh, and I can, I can identify with um, with the thrill of, of, uh, of the challenge of it and, and the, the sort of emotional reward that you get when you're successful. The computer forensics expert whose evidence helped convict him was David Day. Hey. You as well. Yeah. Hey. Uh, how, how, was your, how was your journey? I was okay. I'm a bit weirded out. We brought hacker and tracker together. This is the first time they've met. So what was the most interesting thing you found on my hard drive? <laughs> I found lots of interesting things on your hard drive, but maybe some of the most in more interesting things I'm not sure I want to, to talk about now. Um, but uh, I, you know, I found pretty much um, every website you looked at. I found uh, loads and loads of files which you probably thought had been deleted. Uh, I found them in uh, system information folders in a place where they'd been hidden away. So was it so was it sort of thrilling for you to 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 look at someone's almost life record? Uh, Honestly, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. You can't see it, right? You can't see he was looking for evidence that Mustafa and the anonymous hacker T-Flow were one and the same. He doesn't condone anything that Mustafa did, but can't help admiring his programming skills. I don't know whether you're even aware that, that, that you were um, more skilled than, than most at being able to do those things. So it makes me wonder what your motivation was for doing it. Well, I suppose being a teenager at the time, one of the biggest motivations was the, the, abil the ability to use basic technology to, 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 to embarrass major um, corporations and people in authority. That, so that, that was, sort of, that was yeah. sort of a, th a, a thrill as a, as a teenager. Like. In simple terms, it was just for fun, for kicks, right? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> sort of like solving a puzzle or solving or problem solving. You, if when you complete the problem at the end, you, you, you do get quite a, a, a sense of achievement. Do you know, that's, that's exactly the same feeling that you get when you're doing forensic work as well. It's working closely with computer security experts like Dr. David Day. Certainly now there's, there's an identification of the need to encourage youngsters to take a different path because it improves the security of the internet and stops those lives and those talents being wasted.
I've been speaking to Dr. David Day, who is a cyber security expert at Sheffield Hallam University. I asked him what people can do to protect their personal information. Uh, well, the first piece of advice I'd give would be to change their password uh, immediately. Um, you know, not, not, not just in relation to this site, but anywhere that that same password is being used on any other site, they need to change the password immediately. Because the bad guys, if they've got hold of that password, encrypted or otherwise, they can still, you know, they, they can still um, reverse that back to plain text to, to its original form. They will be looking at all the other potential websites. And we're, we're talking about things like Amazon and AOL and eBay that they'll try to access using that same password for that particular individual. Some people might delete an app. Is that enough for things then secure your personal data? No, not at all. I mean, if you, if you remove the app, obviously you're eliminating the potential for, for any issues with that particular app, say, on, on your phone or on your, on your PC. Um, but it's too late. You know, the genie's out of the bottle. Those, uh, those passwords and those details are now, you know, potentially in the, uh, in the public domain. And uh, if bad guys get hold of those, they will be trying that password, as I said, on multiple other sites, some of which uh, they might be able to make purchases from, like I say, some of the uh, online retailers. So, no, it's not enough. You, you, you absolutely have to, you know, change that password on, on any other site that they're using it for. I mean, in, in all honesty, you, you know, you shouldn't be using the same password uh, on multiple sites anyway. Uh, but if you are, for, for, for uh, you know, if you do nothing else, please, please change that password. Never, ever use the same password. You really, really shouldn't. I can understand why people do, because there's a convenience thing there. But the significance of this is, is you know, it can't be understated. If your password gets leaked, that password, the same password can be used on other sites. The bad guys will try those other sites with that password. Now, when you book a flight, right, you expect your airline to keep all your personal data secure, don't you? Yeah, but that's not what happened for about half a million British Airways customers. And now the airline is facing a fine of about $230 million from UK authorities. It is the biggest that they've issued since this new GDPR data protection laws came into force across Europe last year. British Airways says it'll appeal, it, it will appeal the penalty over what it says was a criminal act that it responded to quickly. Well, we'll find out. Dr. David Day is special visiting lecturer in cyber security at Sheffield Hallam University and joins us from Derby in central England. Uh, David, great to have you with us. Hey, David, can I ask you this? I've been hearing from some travel experts and they were saying airlines are extremely um, tempting targets to cyber criminals because like banks, they use legacy technology. Basically, they're using old systems. Well, this particular incident uh, is, is a little bit more than that. Uh, what's happened is there's been a misuse of the uh, software that their website is using. It's a third party application, a third party plugin, if you like, that their mm. website uses. And it's that that was being compromised. So, so BA could you know, potentially argue that it, that it isn't their fault, it wasn't their software that was compromised. However, that piece of software they've agreed to be used in a very dangerous place on that website, in the, the place where credit card details are being collected. It's insane. A number of us for, for, for some time now have been saying how foolish it is to put that kind of technology in a position where that's where people are entering their payment card details. Mm. And what's happened is there's a vulnerability has been found. The bad guys have got in there. They've changed this, this piece of code uh, without going too technical in, in such a way that the data is being siphoned off as you type it and sent to the bad guys as well as being sent to, to BA for transactional purposes. It is their fault. It is their mistake. They haven't done due diligence. They haven't checked the software that was being used on their website and they are liable and they should be fined. Well, so, so given that, I was, I was about to say to you, when this new European law came into force, it was pretty clear you got to protect your consumers' data. So I, I can't see that they've got a leg to stand on if they make an appeal. No, I don't think so. And I, I sincerely hope that if they do make an appeal, that the, the supervisory authority in the UK, that's the ICO, I'm hoping in this case that the ICO sees this through and they do get uh, fined in the way that they're stipulating. It, it, you know, you, you, you can't make those kind of mistakes. That piece of software, that third party plugin that they were using on their website should not have been there mm. and should and and due diligence should have been put in place Th now this 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 piece of code if you like it was changed it was modified it was altered and they should have spotted that straight away now a, a number of weeks had passed actually before they actually realized this breach had taken place and by that time you know 500,000 passengers information had been 
uh, siphoned off to the bad guys. Clearly, you know, a, a catastrophic mistake and they should be held responsible for it. In about 15 seconds, 20 seconds, does this make other companies sit up and really pay attention? Well, it certainly should. Mm. So anybody that's using a website that uses plugins really has to make sure they're on top of that, keeps them up to date, and make sure their website's secure. Because if it happened to BA, it's going to happen to everybody else as well. You've got to make sure those third-party plugins are safe. Indeed. Dr. David Day, a real pleasure. We appreciate your insights. Thanks very much for joining us. This security expert is asking whether there was an internet hack or a leak of customer details. The scale seems unprecedented. Within this country, it's groundbreaking. I've not heard of another instance of a bank being attacked with so many records being obtained at the same time and so many breaches happening simultaneously. So uh, 40,000 records, 20,000 with money that had been moved out is huge. We're talking about a very, very large number of records and it's my view that it was intentional to try and maximise the breach to do this in one go. If you do this with individual records or individual users, the banks become suspicious, they can put measures in place to deal with it. Do the app users stand to lose? Well, a lot, if the hackers can use their passwords. If those encrypted passwords can be cracked, and in many instances they can, then the bad guys can go onto other sites that those users could use and harvest further information from those users, which they could use for identity theft or to try and convince the, the banks that they want to change details about, about them. Um, so there's a, there's a whole manner of really uh, quite nasty things which uh, bad guys can do if they've got hold of passwords which are being used on more important sites.